he's standing in a pond why are you standing in a pond this is so sims 4 like they were just having a perfectly nice chat over there and now they're shin deep in a pond for literally no reason oh my god nerium what are you doing prom what well, there's no prom in the apocalypse um hello from the void it's rose welcome back to my channel and the apocalypse and welcome to generation two of my poison garden legacy i have decided officially that we are drawing a line under eden last episode we finished up all of her goals and we are going to switch focus to kiri and start working through generation two and then when i'm ready for her to leave the gas station and move out into the house i have built her we are going to go back finish up strangerville like an eden throwback and then head onwards so that means that we need to recap the rules for generation two which even though i wrote the challenge i can't remember so let's go do that first of all thank you to past me for making this so i didn't have to just do that and also to past me for remembering that we needed to max the child motor skill and befriend an animal as a child that was our beloved chicken noodle soup who is still with us so onto the rules that we still have to do if you don't want spoilers by the way for some of like the key narrative things uh put your fingers in your ears i'll drop a time stamp on the screen now that will tell you where to skip to but basically as a teenager we are going to be sneaking out to meet a forbidden love we are then going to run away and move in with them on our YA birthday and that teen will also have the non-committal trait we will eventually have a child with that sim we're not allowed to have a job um, whilst we are with that sim and eventually we will break up with them basically um, over the course of our lifetime we need to max the baking skill I'm also choosing to add in maxing the flower arranging skill this was a suggestion from morgan who is frolicking gnomes here on youtube i'm going to link you to her channel in the description but she added this in for her gen 2 air and i actually think it lines up really nicely with the story and makes a lot of sense anyway at some point we're going to leave for a new start we're also going to max the wellness skill we're going to complete the soulmate aspiration and if we have time we will write a cookbook as well as only ever home cooking meals no quick meals for our kiddos no 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 okay so those are them rules let's go meet our heiress i mean re-meet we know her whatever you get me let's go and here she is the woman of the hour gen 2 heiress kiri Woo, make some noise and she is in fact getting ready to sneak out per the rules her brother sleeping her mother sleeping kiri oh yeah i'm just getting ready for bed lying liar who lies miss kiri is currently making a plan to get out of the house in order to meet up with a very confusing and confounding boy that she ran into in henford upon bagley here she goes she's just like oh yeah just gonna go check on my chicken friends nothing to see here checking that everyone is sleeping before sneaking out now, I feel like for Kiri at the moment, Nerium is definitely a very confusing thing. She loves her, oh, where is he? Oh, is it because it's late and it's been like, oh, he's asleep. Well, fine then, we will cheat to bring him here. We are sneaking out to meet a boy and if we don't meet him, then what's the point? Anyway, she's kind of both into him, but kind of grossed out by him. I mean, literally case in point, he farted music notes at us, I mean, he is a hot mess express but he is literally the only contact with the outside world that she has and i think for him she's definitely a curiosity living in hanford he knows everyone right and then there's this strange girl she's kind of cute she's kind of weird but to be completely honest i don't think either of them know what they want or what they're doing kiri does have the want to kiss someone i don't know if that's gonna happen i have the autonomous kiss thing on i kind of want him to make the first move and we have found out that he's sick signal he's single which is good i was hoping they were going to do some stargazing but kiri's been like no i'm going to demonstrate my athletic prowess look at me go look at me go he doesn't want to look at you go he would rather oh no he's standing in a pond why are you standing in a pond this is so sims 4 like they were just having a perfectly nice chat over there and now they're shin deep in a pond for literally no reason it is so hard to do storytelling in this game because you're like oh just behave like this this is the apocalypse no one has their phones everyone has their phones standing in a pond but you know teen love knows no bounds and maybe he's like standing here i feel really connected to the countryside um or maybe they're just damp who knows getting out of the ponds please don't be running away from me thank you 
I've told Kiri to go over and do some friendly interactions with him. I feel like at the moment it's definitely still on the cusp of like, is he flirting with me? Is he not? I don't know. I have nothing to balance this against. So we're gonna look at the stars together. And I feel like Kiri probably knows more about the stars because Eden would have taught her how to navigate. And Nerim's like, cool, I guess I just always thought they were pretty, but I guess you know more. You're pretty cool, pretty interesting. And for Kiri, that is gonna be a great thing to hear and I have actually got her to bring a flower from her garden to give to him because I feel like she knows that's a romantic gesture and she loves growing flowers and so she's like hey I brought you something it made me thought of you possibly she doesn't know it's normally the other way around but doesn't matter he seems really into it and oh my god it's happening yes autonomous mod get it Ah, it's true love's first kiss, or probably not true love. It's teen love's first kiss. Adorable. I love it. I'm so happy that happened. Let me know in the comments how big your Nerium red flag is. Is it like a little red flag? Is it a big red flag? Or are you just like, mm, I think this is completely healthy and they're going to be together forever and ever, even though the fact that they're only ever meeting in the dead of night in the forest is definitely a concern. And when he's decided to go jogging, well, do you know what? It's been a couple hours. It's the middle of the night. So let's get home and get ourselves to bed. Look how pretty this lot is. I mean, pretty, not the right word vibey look how vibey this lot is i'm gonna miss it i'm gonna miss it for sure although i am super excited about the gen 2 start a lot um you'll see it eventually and kiri has managed to sneak in and get to bed without callow seeing her he did wake up and have a wee but he didn't see her she was in first so for now her secret is safe although it might not stay safe for long if she keeps lying in in the morning because Eden never normally does the garden that's normally Kiri's thing but Kiri is sleeping in because uh, she didn't get to bed till super late um hopefully Eden is just gonna be like oh they're teenagers it's fine this is normal it's okay but Eden is paranoid so she's definitely gonna start noticing that her kid is behaving differently and also the fact that she's having to do chores she never had to do and the reality is babe you're not my main character anymore so you will be doing more chores but um oh no noodle soup starving feed your baby kiri just because you are experiencing the first flush of hormonal attraction doesn't mean that your chicken should suffer all right feed them get them eggs okie dokie I'm probably gonna whiz through the days in this portion pretty quickly because essentially all that's happening is chores and it's the same chores we've been doing since pretty much the beginning of the challenge. So even though I have edited the teen lifespan back to 14 days because who wants teenagers for three weeks, not I, we will probably still just whiz through the daytimes as quickly as possible and to be honest, anything boring. That doesn't serve either Kiri's story or amuse me enough that I'm gonna narrate it for you to be honest the one part of gen one we didn't get to do was an optional girl to have an evil chicken so i am tempted to send eden into henford to try and get an obsidian treat once we are done with chores partly just because i feel like story wise she knows callow oh my god oh my god nerian what are you doing you've got a bag on your head uh prom what there's no prom in the apocalypse um if i say no they get bad emotions um okay i feel like she would say yes because she's like a romantic sim um he wants to go as friends well you just said we were gonna go as dates no we're not going as friends oh god this is gonna right i'm gonna have to go in and like edit that yeah bad sentiments this whole feature is so bloody glitch look at his stupid bag face um let us just go in and delete out those things yeah we don't want that no dejection we are going to prom as romantic dates although are we going to go to prom i don't know i've got two days to figure that out and then Nerim, you have got to get out of here buddy i don't know how you got over here i don't know how you got through the gate but get the hell out because eden might actually try and kill you like with knives or what weapon would she i mean poison definitely but it's slow acting she might just stab you for funsies so um can you possibly get out before she sees you i guess you've kind of got a disguise on but this is not ideal oh my god this is so tense uh callow is definitely gonna see him um okay it's plausible that maybe she doesn't see him out the corner of her eye maybe she's just staring into space so i think we can argue that Eden still doesn't know but oh my god oh my god honestly high school years you are messing with me that was that was not what I wanted 
So I think if we're gonna say Eden didn't see him, then she was quite intently thinking about something and potentially that thing might have been how messy it's got around here and how her kids aren't being the diligent helpers. Oh my God, she's singing. That sounds so bad. But her kids aren't helping in the way they used to. Yes, they're getting older, but I feel like their increasing disobedience and independence is gonna be, oh my God, shut up, stop singing. Yeah, Kiri's like, I cannot listen to this. I'm, I'm with you, girl. But they are having a small disagreement around the sun or something, I don't know. Anyway, I think the thing is at this stage, Eden is probably aware that her kids are growing up and not in a way that she might want. So I don't think she would take either of them with her to go and get obsidian trees. I think she would just go on her own, especially as it's an abnormal visit. And I am very, very quickly just gonna be look for no midnight treats, sad, no obsidian eggs, sad. I just, I want an evil chicken. I've never had an evil chicken. I don't want an evil chicken, it's not fair. I love chaos and what's more chaotic than an evil chicken? Agatha, can you help me out babes? Come on from one person who spurned romance to another, please, for the love of God, have a midnight treat for me so I can make my chicken evil. Does she have one? She's got some basil, don't care about basil. Oh, she doesn't. When will I get an evil chicken? Probably never at this rate, but we can at least appreciate the amount of effort I made to make Henford look a bit ruined. Um, please give me props. Tell me how brilliant I am in the comments because I am an egomaniac. No, I'm lying, but you know, if you think it looks nice, do you tell me. It's always good to know. <laughs> I like the little ruin thing. I actually built a ruined church that you're gonna see at some point, which I love. Oh God, there's some bad CC going on there. Right, back to the lot, back to the lot and the grind and the naughty, naughty childer. One of the naughty children is reading a romance novel while her brother does hard work. And honestly, this is kind of a fair reversal because we spent a lot of their childhood years with Kiri working her butt off while Callow wrote in his journal or played dolls and imagined running away. And now Kiri is imagining running off into the sunset with a certain red haired cowboy. And Callow is trying to be a good son so that his mum lets him have the same freedom. She's allowed her much less troublesome daughter. Sure, you can like alternative music, babe. They are much happier since I gave them a radio. Um, it's just a crappy little one from the Ravachine Filthy Fabulous kit, but uh, it makes sense for them, I think. Kala has self-directed to learn the research and debate skill. Maybe he wants to learn how to win his mum over, or maybe he just wants to bargain with God to get his hand back that keeps vanishing. Either way, good to see him working on himself and not just yelling at his mother. Kiri is very flirtily watering her garden. She's like, oh, if I grow some really nice flowers, maybe I can give them to Narium and then he'll kiss me again. That is the kind of logic I think her teenage brain is doing just now. And that is all good. Probably gonna think about wrapping this episode up soon because we've got uh, nothing in particular coming up. We have got chores to do. I'm hoping our cow plant is gonna grow back soon because I missed that little guy. Uh, Kiri is tired and flirty. This is the problem. You go out all night and then you can barely function. I know this all too well. I regularly don't go to bed till 2 a.m. and it's never a good plan, but can I stop myself? No, I cannot. I have horrible self-control. Oh my God, Nerium, no. You wanna be, be sure, we can be best friends, but can you stop coming to my goddamn house? You are not meant to know where I live. Dude, you cannot be here. Get the hell out. Take your bag face and be gone. Kiri, now is not the time for flirting. I am MCCing him out of here. Get gone, little man, before you die. I honestly can't believe how much jeopardy the high school user interactions have added to this scenario. And Callo is definitely also like, girl, what are you playing at? You know what mum is gonna do if he finds out. Kiri, what are you, Kiri, what? Is Kiri just, Kiri is squeamish and she has just been so overcome by the power of flirtation that she has gone and nosedived into a dumpster. If you needed any proof that hormones make us do stupid and out of character things, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I give you squeamish sim in a bin. Thank you. Anyway, Callow is definitely gonna be thinking about confronting his sister at some point because she is making choices that could get them both in trouble. And for now though, he's just wandering around outside looking a bit sad, feeling energetic and doing some collecting. 
And I think before anything else chaotic happens, I'm going to call time on this episode here. We are going to leave Callow mulling over how he is going to both stop his sister doing crazy things and not get her into too, too much trouble because he is still a good guy. Eden is hysterical about a pile of trash. Girl, just go to bed, please. For the for God's sake. I mean, technically you can die now, it's fine, but I do want you to finish Strangeville. So if you could avoid it, that would be great. And Kiri is safely in bed instead of sneaking out tonight and yeah let me know in the comments what you think let me know whether you think we should go to prom or not let me know if there's any way to turn off the high school use things or do we like the chaos we like the chaos don't we anyway thank you so so much for watching i appreciate it as always every little thumbs up comment subscribe means so so much to me really appreciate you all love you bye <laughs>